Good morning, and welcome to St. Peter's for Worship. Today we focus more on Jesus, our High Priest, and how he gives us rest that none other can give, the rest in the forgiveness of sins by being our mediator between us and the Father. We will worship according to the new service sample sheets that you'll find in the pew, and we'll begin with the opening hymn. May God bless our worship this morning. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God, glory to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, keep your household, the church, in continual godliness and set us free from all adversities that, under your protection, we may serve you with true devotion and holy deeds. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is recorded in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 10 through 12. We read. 
Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and allow him to suffer. Because you made his life a guilt offering, he will see offspring. He will prolong his days, and the Lord's gracious plan will succeed in his hand. After his soul experiences anguish, he will see the light of life. He will provide satisfaction. Through their knowledge of him, my servant will justify the many, for he himself carried their guilt. Therefore, I will give him an allotment among the great, and with the strong he will share plunder, because he poured out his life to death, and he let himself be counted with rebellious sinners. He himself carried the sin of many, and he intercedes for the rebels. The word of the Lord. We continue with the psalm of the day, Psalm 22, on page 71. The second reading is recorded in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9 through 16. This reading will be the basis for our sermon meditation this morning. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God rested from his work. Therefore, let us make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will fall into the same pattern of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the point of dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, even being able to judge the ideas and thoughts of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from him, but everything is uncovered and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we will give an account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, namely Jesus the Son of God, 
let us continue to hold on to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. So let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Please stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel appointed for the second... 22nd Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in Mark chapter 10 verses 35 through 45. We read, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached him and said, Teacher, we wish that you would do for us whatever we ask. He said to them, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Promise that we may sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I am going to be drink, that I'm going to drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am going to be baptized with? We can, they replied. Jesus told them, You will drink the cup that I am going to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am going to be baptized with. But to sit at my right or my or at my left is not for me to give. Rather, these places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard this, they were angry with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But that is not the way it is to be among you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you will be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn 338.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You're only making this worse for you. That's a phrase that many children have heard and many parents have uttered. I'm sure you know the situation in which a parent says such a phrase. A child is in trouble. They've done something bad. The parent knows it. And the child is hiding. The reason the parent utters that statement is because they already know all the details of what bad thing the child did and hiding isn't going to make the punishment go away. And ultimately, it's going to make it worse. This dynamic of fruitlessly attempting to hide from punishment proves to be the same among God, our Father in heaven, and his children. Despite knowing God's omniscience, despite knowing that he knows everything, we often attempt to hide our sins from God. Hiding our sins from God exposes a deep misunderstanding within us. The idea that somehow our own efforts and our own reputation mediates our relationship with God. That is not where we go to make peace between us and God when we have sinned against God. We go to the mediator, the go-between, who makes peace and gives us rest. We go to the high priest for rest. Hiding affords us no rest. But approaching God's throne of grace affords us mercy. If you, if you recall, last Sunday I spoke about Christ's supremacy over Moses and how his gospel is superior to Moses' law. Here we see how much more Christ's Sabbath is superior to Moses' Sabbath. The real Sabbath rest is the forgiveness in Jesus, not taking a day off from work once a week. This rest is, without a doubt, the rest that we wish to enter. So the writer tells us, make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall into the same pattern of disobedience. The disobedience he refers to is the disobedience of Israel, who constantly disobeyed God. They are an example to us, not a positive one to follow, but a negative one to avoid. Remember, a Christian has two natures, a sinful nature and a new creation, each vying for control of the person. The writer is encouraging us to continue in our new creation which seeks to follow God. And this is crucial because, as the writer reminds us, the Word of God, the Word of God which created our new creation, is living and active. It is a powerful force. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It can divide even the soul and the spirit. It can even judge the ideas of our very hearts. There is nothing hidden from God and his word. A child might be able to hide some of their sins from their parents. But God sees all. We cannot hide our sins from him. As such, there is no point in siding with the sinful nature. Its crimes and its evils will not be hidden from God. They will be punished. There is a key error that we fall into when we try to hide our sins from God. It's not just because it's foolish and ineffectual. It shows that we have a misunderstanding about how we are right before God, about how we are saved. It shows that we 
think that we're responsible for how we appear before God. And we have to hide away our sins because if God sees them, he'll punish us. So we have to find a way to get rid of them. But as the writer to the, Hebrew sh to the Hebrews shows, that won't work. We cannot make ourselves presentable before God with our own efforts. Hiding our sins will afford us no rest. Like a child awaiting punishment from his parents because they know he messed up, the guilt and shame racks us and keeps us from rest. That's why, in order to, in order to find rest from this miserable state, we must go to the high priest. There we find mediation. There we find mercy. The Sabbath rest for the people of God is the rest of the forgiveness of sins. The Sabbath rest is rest from our labors, from trials, from hardship, suffering, and sin, and all of its effects. This rest is ours because it was given to us by our great high priest, Jesus Christ. He became our mediator. He became the one who goes between us and the Father, assuring him of our atonement. How did he do this? The writer says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet was without sin. Jesus was made a human being, just like us, but he was without sin. He was, in te he was tempted in every way that we are. But unlike we, who time and again give in to our temptations, Jesus never did. But he knows our human weaknesses, and he sympathizes with us. He sympathized with us so much that he as the great high priest, offered his own sinless life as the great sacrifice to atone for all of our sins, making us at one with God. Hiding our sins affords us no rest, but approaching God's throne of grace affords us mercy. No, God does not want you to hide your sins from him. He wants you to bring your sins before him so that, they may, so that they may be wiped out by the great high priest and his great sacrifice. What have we been saying together before the confession of sins in the service? If we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. When you come before God at the beginning of worship, you are coming as a sinner and you are admitting that. You are not hiding it. You are confessing it, placing it before the great high priest so that the great high priest may, with his sacrifice, wipe it clean. When you come before God's altar, you come to receive that sacrifice of the great high priest's body and blood. You are coming forward as a sinner to have your sins washed away in that forgiving flood of Jesus' blood. If there are ever specific sins that are troubling you, do not be afraid to come to me, and I, as your called servant, will give you that forgiveness of sins that our great high priest has won for you, and I will work with you to help you overcome those sins. I will direct you to the great high priest for rest. Do not hide your sins. Approach the throne of God with them. Because his throne is a throne of grace. And you will receive mercy when you bend before his throne on high. If you need rest, and we all do, go to the great high priest for rest. Hiding our sins affords us no rest. It only affords a life filled with fear and guilt. 
It only makes us always worried and anxious about whether or not we've done enough, whether or not we've hidden our sins well enough. But we can't hide our sins from God. It's impossible. Thus, we can only approach God's throne of grace for mercy. And because of our great high priest and his great sacrifice, we know we will receive it. Because our great high priest, though he died, did not stay dead. He rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and eternally mediates for us on high, eternally sustaining our atonement with God. Because of our great high priest, we will join him in that everlasting glory. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in the confession of faith of all Christians, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Raise up Christians to serve you in the ministry of the word and in all godly walks of life. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again.
We join in hymn 390. Please stand for prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, so that, being strengthened and comforted by your word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn, hymn 331. Thank you all for worshiping here with us today. A special welcome to any visitors in attendance today. We hope you join with us for worship again soon. Just a few announcements. Uh, Bible study going on again. Uh, we're going to be learning about how the new hymnal aids in the use of daily devotions. Uh, definitely a useful, a useful tool to be sure. Uh, again, bathroom renovation fund. Donate to the maintenance fund if you would like to donate to that cause. Next Sunday, we will be having our own Reformation Festival service, uh, but there will also be a joint Reformation service uh, at St. Peter's in Fond du Lac at 3 p.m. Uh, I would definitely recommend heading to both worship opportunities. I will be there myself. Uh, and also, uh, next Sunday, after this festival service, there will be, um, after our service, uh, we will be having our October voters meeting. Other than that, I believe there are no other announcements. May God bless the rest of your week.